Hey guys and welcome back. Well, this is part 3. If you haven't seen the other parts, I highly recommend you check it out. So how to create synthetic dimensions using value list, how to have an aggregated measure when you're using a synthetic dimension, and how to get across um, the issue of using an aggregated measure by, well, using your aggregate in your calculated dimension instead. This is part three. I promised in part two that there's actually an easier way if you want to have an aggregated measure and you don't want to create a calculated dimension. If you haven't seen the other parts, check it out and check out the links in the description. Let's get into part three. So what do you do? Well, this is what we did. That is, we created a calculated dimension in our part two, that is, check it out. Um, we created a calculated dimension here. That is, if sum of sales is greater than 800,000, I wanted to put it under a dimension called top countries and then otherwise middle countries, bottom countries, and I wanna aggregate it across my field called country and that gave me three different values for my dimension and then in my measure it was a simple count distinct right um, but i promised you all that you could actually instead of using a calculated dimension you could do something else and what is that well let's look into it let's start again as our part one where we're going to call in our value list so if you part one we used value list as uh, our function and I use this variable where I run through well basically my values in my dimension that I want so over here I'm gonna say the dimension that I want is those values so I say value list what is the value list well it is essentially my variable called v top list good and it brings me the values that are inside so this is going to be our dimension this is our synthetic dimension so i say apply um, and we know that aggregation doesn't work so how can i get around my aggregation and still use still write a measure that actually works so let's start writing so essentially what we're saying is if one of the values of our value list that is our value list we top list matches countries we want it to count distinct countries but not all countries what are the countries we wanted to count well we wanted to count we're going to write a calculated set expression open and close curly braces angled brackets country is equal to open and close curly braces again it's a search function so we use double quotes i hope you remember sales amount is greater than eight hundred thousand. good that is one else we continue our if statement if value list right so what do we actually write here? We say if the value list is V top list matches our top countries, then we say count distinct where country is all the countries where the sum of sales is greater than 800,000. Else, if it matches middle countries, that is our synthetic dimension, of course, because we only have three synthetic dimensions, right? Uh, matches middle countries, then count distinct country where country sum of sales is greater than a hundred thousand but otherwise we wanted to count all that are less than hundred thousand that's the bottom countries and one small adjustment here since we're looking at distinct i'm just gonna say um just to make sure that the countries fall into i mean the right segregations i want to say it since this is greater than eight hundred thousand i want to say here is less than 800,000 because that's my upper limit here. Good. So if value list matches top countries, then count distinct wherever the country has a sales greater than 800,000. If it's middle, then it's greater than 100,000 and less than 800,000, then count it. Else, count all of them and put it under count all that has sales amount less than 100,000 for my middle countries because that's the last one remaining here i have top countries middle countries let's click on apply great and now you see that this kind of this matches exactly the answer that we got previously 
uh, maybe it's a little more complicated, right? Uh, let's write this. We can actually improve this one step better, you know, just because we like going that extra mile. Instead of doing this super annoying if statement, the reason I always use if statement is because it's super easy. Um, when I teach somebody, it's super easy to understand, right? right? It's like if blah, 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 then blah, blah, blah. So um, it becomes super easy, but we could change this. Instead of an if statement, we could use pick match. What are we matching? Well, we're matching the value list. What are we matching the value list of? Well, it is our dollar V top list. What are we matching it with? Well, we are matching it with our top list. Good, we get pick and match. And then we can say if you if it matches any of this, then in the first case, we want it to be this one. And then we take away else we want it to be this or in the third option. And we have an extra comma here. Good. So we're saying pick from our value list whenever it matches one of the three. So first it's going to be top countries. It matches it. Then it says number one. Good. And it executes our first measure count. Otherwise it executes our second measure count and else the third. Not really if and else. It's basically match top countries when it matches that picks the first one when it matches the middle one picks the second one when it matches the third one picks the final one good let's click on apply and we still have the the same values well i hope you learned some new new stuff here please leave a like really appreciate it love the feedback and the reviews that everybody's left for the course check out the links below i'll see you in the next one have a good one peace